Buddy, Bobby Fowler, my man, Eric G. Tabor. We're going to be talking through tonight's NBA slate. We got another three gamer, so we're going to keep doing. The, we're going to keep going after it as long as we as long as we have these three games. And uh, it's been interesting so far because you have been able to get different. There's been a lot of those, you know, the weird guys stepping up in some certain places and 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 guys out of nowhere, you know, getting hot. Uh, some low owned plays going crazy. Grayson Allen going completely nuts the last couple of games. I had that one. Oh, nice. Did you have it yesterday or did you have it Friday too? I had it yesterday. Oh uh, yeah, yesterday. Uh, that's great. Um, but he, what was he? What was he on? So, yeah, I mean, he was pretty. I'd be pretty low. I, I know on Friday he was like unowned. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you my lineup. Pull it up. Pull it all up. All right. Uh, let me. Uh, so this was my. Uh, this was my five fifty five lineup from yesterday. Um, we had Patrick Williams at fifteen percent, and we had Grayson Allen at eight. Beautiful. And if Chris Paul, Chris Paul had a, had a really down game. Yeah. No kidding. huh? <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. He had what he had 58 going from 58 to 26 is a, is a rough go. Yeah, but, uh, Booker, yeah. Nice lineup. Dude, your man, your Herb Jones was freaking obscene, obscene last night. He was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He was great. Um, he was all over the court. Really liked that guy in general. Um, so like I said, I mean, I was able to get, you know, one, two, I mean, these are kind of a couple of low own plays here for a four game. So look at that. That's not bad. Uh, yeah, no, there's going to be, there, we're going to have some, I mean, that's, 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 that's exactly what you want to do. Um, and, and even, even your, your, your other plays are all like in the, they're still in the lower, lower end of the, of the ownership. So, you know, everything below 30% except for one player. That's pretty cool. Um, and everybody had Vincent, so it didn't really matter. Yeah. Um, well, let's, let's get to it. Let's get to today's slate. Let's go game by game. Let's see if we can't improve on that one even. Um, all right. I, I, I can't believe there's no, there's no 777 tonight. Cause, dude, look at my look at my balance up here. Oh my god, yeah, they they, they, don't, they never do on the right the weekdays for basketball um, during during the playoffs. Only the only the, the ultimate OCD. Like, I need a seven seventy seven. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about it a little bit. Let's talk about Boston and Brooklyn. Somehow, um, Boston continues to to be the underdog. <laughs> I said that going in game three. I thought that was just absolutely ridiculous that Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn minus four. Uh, I don't know what people are watching now. It is a, a closeout game. It's a one for, for Brooklyn to be a one point favorite. Okay, I understand it, but Bobby, honestly, I told Bobby, I told you they do that in the game threes when the, the team is 02 coming. Well, I know, I know they're just wrong. I'm just saying it's so wrong. Much respect. Yeah, I, 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 but I, but I, but it's weird because I like the other teams in the game threes that, that actually made sense. I just don't understand why we just do that. With, like, it, it, Brooklyn just, it, I mean, their record against the spread has got to be like an all-timer. I know the Lakers were one of them all-timers at the first half of this, this season, but these, these guys are just, look, these are two different level of basketball teams and Boston is significantly better. And as I've said forever, that I think that if people take away those two post seasons in Golden State, which by the way, they would have probably won the title without Kevin Durant. Um, I, I, the guy is, he chokes in the playoffs. He's, he's James Harden. I, I tweeted it out. He, to, to some extent, is a, I expect him to have a big game tonight, so I'm still going to say all this, though. He's legitimately like a taller James Harden. He, he doesn't, he's soft. He's not, a, he's not an alpha, and he tries to be, and he's trying to, to masquerade as one. And, and I just think that, like, he's getting punked by, like, I mean, Jason Tatum is not only outplaying him, they look like they're completely two different levels of basketball player in this series. i tell you who else is outplaying him, Bruce Brown. Well, they, well, they're, I mean, that's because the way the defense is forcing them to go, they're, they're, you know, and, and, and he's getting a lot of attention, but I, I mean, again, like I understand Brooklyn might win one and salvage it. I just, this immediately feels like a Boston sweep right now to me. Um, even if Brooklyn, Brooklyn could be up 20 again in the, in the third quarter. And, and I still feel, I still feel like Boston will have an excellent chance to win this game. Um, so I like Boston I, I, just as a, as a, as a straight out thing, everybody sort of is, is, tracking to be like a, a good play on Boston, but nobody who I feel like I need to have. Um, I think Robert Williams minutes projection is probably a little higher than it should be uh, for take that for what it's worth. Uh, I think you could, you could make an argument. Maybe that benefits Horford. And I think that KD I, is going to have a game there, even if he's just forcing it up. I, I, I just think he's gotta, he's gotta take, start taking some shots. You can't play. You can't have a series like this. I mean, it's actually embarrassing how badly he's played. Um, so I, I will play Kevin Durant after that little hold my whole spiel, and I think Kevin Durant is a very strong play 
in tournaments. I think he's going to end up being lower owned than people project. Although his, his numbers projection, he hasn't come close to. Um, I don't think he's been within 20 points of his, of his projected scoring, his projected output this whole series. Um, but I will take some shots with Kevin Durant tonight. And I'm really struggling to decide which of the, of the Bostons I really want to go after. I think the answer is going to end up being Jalen Brown for me. How about you? Yeah, I'm probably staying away from this game. Um, if anything, I'll play, try to find a way to play both Duran and Tatum. Um, I do like them both. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I just, I just rather play Luca and Embiid if you want another mm-hmm. truth. Uh, so, uh, uh, I don't, I agree with your assessment, by the way, of the Bruce Brown thing. Um, I'm not getting to him today. I'm just, I can't find any value. I'm not, there's no way I'm playing, but you know, this, you, I was about to say there's no way I'm playing Andre, Andre Drummond, but this is like a perfect, perfect time for him to like troll break the slate. I don't know. It looks like this closeout game. Andre Drummond, dude, let me freaking play. It's a freaking closeout game, whatever it is. But he's nothing and, to them. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, you know, a, that, that actually, to me, would make the argument for Claxton, but I'm, well, I'm just focusing on it. They start him. I don't know. Yeah, but that doesn't mean – I mean, he doesn't – he never plays more minutes. He's They're terrible when he's on the court. I just – I think that would be really weird if they played him more minutes tonight, but it's possible. He is cheap. So, in any case, I mean, with, with Malachi Flynn on the slate, I mean, you could probably get both Tatum and Embiid in – I mean, excuse me, Tatum and uh, Katie in pretty easily. Um, so, I, I, I consider doing that. But aside from that, um, I prefer the other spend ups better. Yeah, um, I, I, I get you. Uh, I, I definitely am going to try to prioritize Durant because I do think he goes off. At, I just don't see – I can't see him doing what he did again the other day. I, I just couldn't believe he wouldn't shoot the ball. I understand how they're putting him in tough spots, but you have no excuse. Like, I don't know, man. You've got you to man up at some point. And, and to be honest, outside of the, uh, the game one, I haven't been at all impressed by Kyrie either. So – uh, the Claxton is one that I, I would consider taking a shot on. Um, probably not going to end up doing it. Maybe more. I, I, honestly, though, if he if he's unowned, I, I'll take some shots there with 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 Clax with uh with Claxton at four point six. And w- w- I don't entirely understand why he's unowned. Um, but most of my love is definitely on this Brooklyn side. I, I think that Brown and Smart are my favorites on the other side, but. Uh, I certainly don't mind Tatum. I just think he's going to be really popular. And I think he's put, spending a lot of effort on defense. So Bruce Brown at 6,500, by the way, is actually, it's actually probably not a misprice. <laughs> like it actually makes enough sense where I can get behind it. Bruce, both Bruce Brown and Steph Curry. And I'm sorry, sorry. And Seth Curry. I, I really don't know what's going to happen or what to expect with Drogic minutes. We saw him play only eight minutes in the last game after playing 20 and 26 in the first two. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if he ended up getting a little extra run but that would be at the expense of Patty Mills, who was hot shooting. So wh- somewhere in between those guys' minutes, I feel like you can try and do something, but I, I don't know what I want to do uh, yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure it out later today, but I do think Drogic is an interesting spend down for sure, along with Claxton. Um, and like I said, Smart and, Smart and Tate, Smart, Smart Tate and Brown, nothing, nothing out of this world on the other side. It is weird the Derek White minutes going away. Uh, maybe it's just not his series. But I could see that changing. He got in foul trouble in game two. Not really sure. I didn't see the whole game three. But um, Derek White is another one we can consider for some value in this game. I just want to point out everybody because there, there is going to be, you know, you're going to want to try and find some things. One thing that's interesting is that Grant Williams, I mean, I guess Grant Williams, I should have probably said more about. He's played 32 minutes in the last two games and he's 3,800. Um, he's probably the preferred guy to, to, he'll be the more popular play. Uh, he doesn't do he doesn't do all that much, but he doesn't necessarily need to at 3,800. You're going to need some value if you want to play some of these studs. So I am on board with playing some Grant Williams. So Fred Van Vliet is out um, for Toronto, um, and as I mentioned, you know for, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Malachi Flynn is probably probably going to be you know tough fade at 3,300. Um, first of all, from a betting perspective, I really like Toronto in this game. Uh, you guys should know me by now. Uh, take Van Vliet out. The rest of the team is just going to, I mean, listen, it's their last game of the season, right? <laughs> they're, they're, they, Van Vliet's going to play 57 minutes, you know, whatever. Uh, not Van Vliet. Uh, was it Siak will play 57 minutes. You know, like they'll all play like a million minutes. 
And I think they'll, they'll I think they'll make a stand. I really do. I think they're going to keep it, you know, closer than people think, which means uh, that Embiid is going to be just a ridiculous smash play. I think on the other side of the scheme, uh, I like Embiid and a bunch of Toronto's, uh, and that's kind of the way I want to play this. I'll play Flynn, but Trent Barnes, Siakam, Ananubi. I think you play multiple Toronto's to make up for the Van Fleet usage. Run it back with MB or however you want to phrase it, or maybe even Harden. Who knows? And I think, you know, listen, I, I, that's probably going to be real a real chalky approach, but that's uh, that's uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I think that the, the I, I'm not sure about this Malachi Flynn thing. I, I don't I don't have I, I don't know for sure that they end up starting Malachi Flynn. Oh, um, start Scotty Barnes is back. I mean, he runs the the the, the, the de facto point. Um, so I, I don't know that Flynn is going to play. I think Flynn might not play any more minutes than he's played so far in the series. I think he's, I think he might even play less to be honest with you um, in a closeout game. So I, I'm not playing Malachi Flynn unless he's starting. Uh, I will play Scotty Barnes at low ownership. I will play one of Thad or Boucher or Precious. Um, excuse me, not Precious. Uh, no, yeah, Precious, excuse me. Yeah, yes, Precious. So one of those three will be in my lineups. I like the Siakam or the Siakam as well. Uh, I, I could see myself playing like four guys from Toronto. The only problem is you're going to get some pretty heavy chalk on the Siakam, Trent, and uh, Precious thing. But I think you can just make that pivot to, to playing Barnes, uh, one of Young or Boucher. All those guys ex I expect to be much lower owned. And OG's price will have no one on him. I'm probably not going to play him either, but just throwing it out there because he will play like – you know, he's projected to play 36 minutes. Give me the over on that all day. Um, unless he gets in foul trouble, I just don't see how he doesn't play like basically the whole game. Um, and I, I agree with you about MB just, but again, massive chalk. I, I will probably end up eating it, but I, I, I'm sort of with you on the Harden and a bunch of these, these Toronto guys. But what I might do is rather than spending all the way up for the Siakam, I might, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I might end up playing, the, the, the cheap ones that, that fit in, maybe maybe you get like a, a Barnes, uh, Trent, and then one of Thad, Precious, or, or uh, Boucher. I think that's a really good way to go. Um, and you can get a little bit lower ownership that way because that is the name of the game, right? We need to find somebody low owned. And I think we have some legitimate options today with those guys. All right, how do we feel about Utah and Dallas sheets? Well, I like Luca. Uh, I think he can play as many minutes as he can handle. Um, I don't know what he can handle, but uh, whatever it is, I think that uh, I like him. And I like, uh, I like Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> I, like, I like Rudy Gobert. I think they're all way, way too cheap. Uh, so these are either more, all the more reason why I don't, I don't really think I'm going to participate participating too much in that Boston uh, Brooklyn game. Root for some kind of, Roofer, some results sort of like the last one, except without Tatum getting 70 fantasy points. I have like some 102-97 game, you know what I mean? Like a Celtic type of game with no, with, without, but some, how does Tatum score 70 freaking fantasy points and the team only score 102? Because he's freaking awesome, I, I guess. I guess that's the best I can describe it. Um, yeah. And uh, about probably- It's, it's up, six deals. <laughs> yeah. That'll, yeah. That'll help. <laughs> um, so- yeah, Gobert, Conley even, 5,400 is really cheap. Uh, Luca, I don't think I want to play anybody else in Dallas today. I think it's going to be the Luca show and uh, some of those Utah guys. I don't know. I, I, I just prefer those, those last two games. Yeah, I, I'm, I've got to say I'm a little bit intrigued at the taking a shot with Dwight Powell. I don't like that it's going to be popular, but he's another one of these valuees that I'm, that I'm considering. Um, Reggie Bullock just plays. I mean, I, I don't know, man. This guy just played. Listen, his minutes in this series so far, 44. He's always on, he's always on the court. Always. 45, 44, and 40, 45.6. And he still has yet to, like, really have a game where you really need him at this price. Um, you can use him to get the 5X. Uh, I'm not going to do it, probably. I think I would side with Dorian Finney-Smith ahead of him, just if nothing else, because of the ownership. And Luca is the main play for me. So that's, that's definitely what I'll be doing. Uh, on the other side, I, I think Donovan Mitchell, yeah. I don't know, man. Like he's, he's been right there every game. He's fine. 
I'm fine with it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to have room for him if I'm going to make my Durant play. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't obviously play Durant, Embiid, and Luca, and I do think Embiid and Luca are the priorities. But I think you're going to get, by the time it's all said and done, I think you're going to get much lower ownership on Durant than he's being projected for, which has sort of been the, the case. Um, uh, Conley is, is, a, is, I think, a reasonable value. I always like Royce O'Neal in these kind of games because they're, I think they're going to have – like he's projected for 30 minutes. He's been projected for 30 minutes in every game in the series and has played over 30 minutes in every game in the series. So – and including, including playing 37 in, in one of the games in Dallas. So I don't see why his minutes are not – projected higher if you give him 30 it's not like he's so super high point per minute but give him 34 minutes and see what happens I don't know this is a really big game um the the long shot play I'm just going to keep mentioning that if I wish I would have just stuck with this one and the other I mean it's not like he's been crazy but like he put up 32 fantasy points the other day Jordan Clarkson's 4700 um I don't mind if you want to take that shot I personally will be sticking mostly to Conley uh Gobert and Mitchell but these games, I mean, we talk about, you know, this game will be much slower than the, than the Brooklyn game. Well, um, they, they just don't play fast and Gobert keeps looking good and still hasn't gotten there. Um, Mitchell has barely gotten there every game. Conley had one game. Royce O'Neal is going to be on the court plenty of minutes. So I'm, I, I will play some Royce O'Neal. Um, so I actually have some value today that I can mix in some plays. I might even, might even put more money in the NBA tonight than I do, uh, MLB because I do think there's a lot of uh, viable routes to go. Um, so I've got my, some of my priorities as being Embiid, obviously Luca and Durant. I'll probably be playing two of those guys in a good portion of my lineups, but not if I can't find a way to fit in Gary Trent, uh, uh, Scotty Barnes. I think Scotty Barnes is like the, the, the low owned play we can get away with on this, that, that could end up having that monster game. And I, and everything you said, by the way, I agreed, I agreed right off the bat. Although I've, in all fairness, I've actually picked Toronto against the spread every game in the series so far. And I actually would have been right three times, but instead I've only been right twice because of uh, that late, late rush by Philly in game three that took game three. This has been a much closer series than people realized. Um, and they've had to play without Van Vliet or without Scotty Barnes. I, I still wouldn't stand by that Toronto would have had a great chance to win the series if, uh, if not for the injuries and everything that's bitten them. Um, but yeah, so that's where I'm at. So Luca and B Duran is the main spend ups somewhere between, you know, the value you've got the Williams, Drogic, uh, Royce O'Neal, Dwight Powell range. I think that Williams is the safest. Which uh, Williams? Grant Williams for the Celtics. B Boucher, Precious, or Thad. I think you're playing one of those three as your other value. That's my, that's my take. Um, but I'll be, again, we'll be alive at 5.30 with talking, talking baseball, but then we'll jump over to NBA and we'll have some time because, uh, We'll, we'll cover all of the all of the the fan the, the fan duel slate which locks at seven and we'll we'll probably go till we can go till uh till three thirty if that or six thirty eastern because I or at least I can because I uh I don't have anything else to do. Um, yeah, it's funny I've been getting back into the AAU basketball this year um and you know I, I noticed some stuff on the court like some of the kids do and I I I, I think I figured out like how Reg, Reggie Bullock gets like 44, 45 minutes. Like sometimes, like some of the kids, they think they know they're going to be taken out. They just almost kind of like hide on the court. Like they kind of like are off in the corner or something like that. I think Reggie Bullock just stands in the corner just so much that when when the coach goes to like put somebody in, he doesn't even see Reggie standing there. And he's <laughs> like, who do I send you in for? Oh, this guy. And he's comfortable over there. He probably doesn't even think he's a player on the court. So yeah, there, there's no reason for them to think that he needs to come out, I think. So maybe right. that's <laughs> That's pretty funny the way you're looking at it, but I, 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 I think it's just, you know, defense three point shooting doesn't ever need anything. It's good for Luca to play with guys like that. Cause they don't really need extra guys handling the ball. It should just be in Luca's hands. That was a great pass by what's his name, by the way, last night, uh, uh, Jokic to, to seal that game. I don't know if you're watching. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So sick. That's amazing. It, finally, he gets a little credit. Everybody's been ripping him apart. Poor guy. Um, yeah. That was a great, it, great finish. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I will be like, we'll be with you live at 530 Eastern time. Uh, hopefully everybody has a good day and let's start this week off on the right foot. Make some money. Right. Yeah. Good luck, everybody. Right, I'll see you later.